What are the main challenges that face the cybersecurity industry moving forward? I think one of the biggest challenges that we face is that we give such crappy advice that we get so focused on the form rather than the content. Right? We tell people that you've got to choose incredibly long, complicated passwords that no one can remember, so they write them on a post-it note and stick them next to their monitor, and that you have to change them every 30 days, which limits the ability for anyone to even con contemplate remembering them. And we're so much more concerned with whether these things are matched when there are other more serious, more gaping holes that people aren't really considering. I think, I think we've done a poor job as an industry in focusing on what's really important. Um, if you ask a group of senior security professionals what they're most afraid of, a, a team of top Belarusian crackers working from their bunker in Minsk trying to break through your firewall, or a clever social engineer with a disposable cell phone sitting in the Starbucks around the corner from your office calling your staff trying to convince them to send confidential data out. They'll tell you that the social engineering attack is the more likely attack to succeed and indeed the more likely attack to occur. And then you ask people, well what percentage of your budget do you spend defending against the social engineer versus your team of top Belarusian crackers and then they get quiet and they walk away because we tend to focus on the problems for which you can buy a thing. Oh look, we've got this nice tech, we put it in, now it's solved this problem. But that's not really the problem we should be addressing. We're, we're letting bigger problems slide as an industry um, because they're harder. Bigger problems like social engineering? Bigger problems like social engineering, yeah. Other examples? I, um, When systems fail, it's usually cock-up rather than conspiracy, right? From the perspective of your customers, from your perspective of your business, whether you have a denial of service a condition, whether your service is interrupted because um, hackers have managed to mount a denial of service attack against your website, or because some junior administrator screwed up some IT process and accidentally knocked things off. It's usually the cock-up, but we're so worried about the conspiracy that we let bigger problems slide um, when we shouldn't. You're about to speak about why people get so emotional in cybersecurity. What are the key points that you're going to draw on in that session? One is that we still sell, we being a lot of the vendor community still sell on fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The, if we make everybody panicked, won't they buy our product? Um, and the answer is maybe they will, but making the best decisions while panicked is not a good, a good place to be. And it also means that we don't get good incident data. If you run a small shop, and a team of armed robbers come in with AK-47s and hold you up. You can report that to the police and everyone will look at you and go, oh, you poor thing, you're a victim. Whereas if you look at the equivalent from a cyber perspective, if you were to report that incident, then the vendor community will pounce on it and go, oh, look at them. If only they had bought our product, this wouldn't have happened. And that means that there is a genuine reluctance to to be transparent about what's going actually on. Um, most of what we hear about in terms of incident data is either so filtered as to be not actually useful or, or just plain wrong. So I think that the emotions feed upon itself. Um, I don't think that's going to change. I know a number of the, the consultancies are are eager to get in to talk to boards about why you need to be more scared, which isn't actually helpful from my perspective.